Junior Ranger. Achoo! Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize for all the achoo! It must be all this pollen in the air. And while pollen can make you sneeze, when it's swept up by the breeze, it actually plays a very important part in giving us all these beautiful flowers, as well as the food that we eat every day. But pollen needs help to spread around. And to do this, it uses very useful critters called pollinators. And that's what we're gonna learn about today, the important purpose of pollinators. Ever wanna know what makes a tree grow tall? A white turtle wears a shell on its back. To get your hiking boots and a walking stick, come along with Ranger Zack. Come along with Ranger Zack. It's the Ranger Zack Show. When pollen isn't being spread by the breeze, it needs a little extra help. And how do you think it does this? Well, by attracting pollinators, of course. And pollinators are animals and insects that help spread pollen from one flower to another. There are many different flowers, fruits, and vegetables that need pollen to reproduce or grow from one generation to the next. So what does pollen look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. Pollen is usually a very fine powder that's the color yellow. Check it out. This yellow part of the flower is called the stamen, and this is where pollen gets made. This middle part of the flower is called the pistil, and that's where the pollen needs to get to to make a seed. To do this, flowers attract pollinators by offering them sweet, sweet nectar for them to eat. When pollen reaches the pistil, it can become a seed. And you should remember from our seed episode that this seed can grow into a new plant, which can become a beautiful flower or delicious food for us to eat. Yum, yum. When a pollinator lands on a flower to drink its sweet, sweet nectar, it gets covered in pollen. As the day goes on and the pollinator continues to feed, it spreads the pollen from one flower to the next. Sort of like a pollen mailman. Knock knock, special delivery here, pollen. You can think of pollinators as pollen mailmen. There are many different pollinators in the world, but today we're gonna talk about my favorite three. Butterflies help pollinate plants, fruits, and vegetables. They're attracted to the colors red, yellow, green, and purple. They have a super long tongue called a proboscis that they use like a giant straw to drink up nectar. When butterflies fly from flower to flower, they do the flower a favor by spreading pollen. Woo, what a mouthful. Are you ready for your Ranger Zack fun fact? Yeah! Well, here it is. Butterflies can taste with their feet. That way, when they land on a plant, they know right away if there's some tasty nectar for them to eat. But don't try this at home unless you want your fruit salad to taste like foot salad. Ugh.
hummingbirds have long curved thin beaks that they can use to get deep inside a flower to get at the sweet, sweet nectar. They're especially attracted to long yellow and red flowers like these ones. When a hummingbird comes in for a quick meal, it gets covered in pollen that it delivers to the next flower. And because they move so fast, hummingbirds have to eat a lot. A single hummingbird may visit one to 2,000 flowers a day. That's a lot for such a little guy. Bees may be the most important pollinator of all. And this is because they're responsible for 80% of the pollination that happens worldwide. They collect pollen and nectar to feed their babies. So they have to visit a lot of flowers and they have special parts of their body to help them collect the pollen. But sometimes before they make it back home to the hive, the pollen drops off onto another flower. And this is the power of pollination at work. Without these helpful little creatures that we call pollinators, life on this planet and the natural world around us would be in real trouble. Many of your favorite food, fruits, and vegetables wouldn't even exist at all. Look at this beautiful picnic that I put together for Pearl and I. The only catch is, she's gonna take away all the food that needs the help from a pollinator. And let's see what we're left with. You ready, Pearl? How about this sweet potato? sweet potatoes. Hmm. You know what I love? Cucumber salad. How about a cucumber, Pearl? Well, that's too bad. No fun at all. Hmm. I know. Asparagus. Hey! Well, at least I got a nice, healthy salad. No salad either! What about almonds? Almonds surely don't need the help from a pollinator, right? Oh, Pearl! This apple sure looks delicious. What do you think, Pearl? Can I eat an apple? Do apples need pollinators to grow? Apples too? 
Ah, Ranger Zach's favorite, avocados. Where would I be without my lovely avocados? What do you think, Junior Rangers? Do avocados need pollinators to grow? What's the answer, Pearl? They do. No avocados for our picnic either. Well, at least we can still have strawberries, right? No. How about this banana? What do you think, Pearl? Can we eat this banana or do they need the help from pollinators as well? They do? Oh, no bananas. Well, at least we can still have a healthy breakfast. Coffee, honey, toast, and water, right? What do you mean, no? Oh, honey, of course. Well, this is turning out to be a very boring picnic. But at least I can still have some toast and coffee, right? No coffee either. Hey, get that back. Pretty boring picnic without pollinators around, huh? Well, Junior Rangers, as you can see, it would be a pretty sad world without pollinators around. So let's go back to the ranger station and learn how we can help our local pollinators at home. Hi, Junior Rangers. Welcome back to the ranger station. Here are four really easy things that you can do at home to help out the pollinators that live in your neighborhood. Number one, you can plant a pollinator garden. Visit a local plant nursery that sells native plants to your area. Ask them which ones are the best for attracting pollinators and plant those ones at home. This is milkweed and it's super important for the monarch butterfly. If you planted milkweed at home, not only would you have monarch butterflies in your garden, but you'd really be helping out this beautiful pollinator. Number two, you've heard of a birdhouse, but this is a bug house. Paint it bright colors to attract pollinators and it'll be a safe place for bees and beetles to live when they're visiting your garden. Number three, you can make a bee and butterfly feeder. Start by taking a bowl and putting it upside down in a larger dish. Fill the dish with rocks and water. Last, put some fresh fruit like pineapple and banana on top of the bowl. This provides water to drink and nectar to eat for butterflies and bees. Make sure you change out the water and fruit every couple of days. That way you don't invite any mosquitoes to the party. The last thing that you can do is tell all your friends and family about how important pollinators are. Ask if they need help attracting pollinators to their garden and you'll be able to do it because now you're a pollinator expert. Now let's do the Ranger Roundup. This week's question comes from Tony, who wants to know all about zebras. Ranger Zach, my question for you, why do zebras have stripes? Bye! Well Tony, scientists have been trying to answer this question for a really long time, and they have three theories. The first one is the black and white stripes confuse flies, who not only bite, but can spread really harmful diseases. The second one is the black and white stripes help regulate the body temperature of a zebra who live on the savanna in Africa, and it can get really hot there, so this is very important. The last theory is the black and white stripes confuse predators, like lions, who feed on zebras. Maybe one day you'll grow up, become a biologist, and you can solve this mystery for all of us, and I hope you do. Now let's do the Junior Ranger Challenge. This week's Junior Ranger Challenge is to try out one of the four easy activities that we talked about to help out the pollinators in your neighborhood. Tag me in a picture of you completing your Junior Ranger Challenge for a chance to be featured as one of our Junior Rangers of the Week. We filmed this week's episode at the Mission San Juan Capistrano in San Juan Capistrano, California. It's a great place that you can visit to check out beautiful flowers and very interesting pollinators. And we want to tell them thank you for letting us buzz by to teach all the junior rangers. 
and also for providing a great spot for our local pollinators. We salute you. New episodes of the Ranger Zach Show come out every Monday, so make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting adventures. And until next time, Junior Rangers, there's a world of adventure right outside your door, so get out there and go explore. This is Ranger Zach and Pearl, over and out.